welcome along to race day. United in racing we are, BMW Motorsport. And it's race day for the first of two races over in Mexico. Puebla is the venue for Formula E this weekend. And we've already had qualifying. So we get a chance to chat to Maxi Gunter. It's been a great qualifying session for BMW as a whole, Maxi. And uh, quite a challenging day so far. Yeah, definitely. I think we just lost Maxi there. Typical, the first uh, word he says. Um, as you can see from behind him, very dark clouds. There's about a 40 to 50% chance of rain. Um, and hopefully we'll get Maxi back in just a second. Um, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a very, very interesting session. In fact, Jake Dennis was in the top three for BMW Motorsport uh, with a very, very strong qualifying um, and uh, Maxi, although in one of the later groups, uh, was able to get himself into Super Bowl uh, and with a more attacking, in my eyes, uh, lap from Maxi, um, he was able to qualify up there as well. Jake was a little bit sort of uh, less dramatic, I think is the best way of putting it, but uh, ultimately the smoothness seemed to pay off. Uh, let's see if we can get a quick uh, word with Maxi, who's back with us. Yeah, real challenge so far today, Maxi. <laughs> yeah, hi guys, I'm back again. Uh, as mentioned, um, FP1, FP2. It's been a real struggle um, and didn't feel so confident in the car, um, but we did some really good setup adjustments from FP2 to qualifying which put us in a much better window and yeah, had a really good lap in, in group qualifying, which put us once more into Super Bowl, which is super important always. And uh, yeah, then at the end of the day, P5 for me, P3 for Jake is a, is a fantastic outcome for the team. And um, yeah, now very much looking forward to the race. I was saying, Maxi, I don't know if you've had a chance to see how Jake's lap unfolded, but his looked quite a bit smoother. Yours looked more spectacular and slidey. Uh, ultimately, the, the smoothness won out. Yeah, of course. I mean, it was my, my intention, my, my aim as well to have a, just a clean, smooth lap. Unfortunately, the lap unfolded a bit different. I lost my tires uh, from turn four onwards, and then I didn't get them back until the end of the lap. That's why I was struggling with overall grip in Super Bowl. But uh, yeah, still, you know, as I mentioned, top five is, uh, is such a great starting position. And uh, for the race, there's so many things to take into consideration later on. Uh, we may even have some rain, who knows? So it's going to be a really nice, really nice race, I think. Yeah, let's talk about the challenges of the Puebla circuit, something that you guys haven't had much chance to prepare for, a new venue, and it looks very, very unique, especially with the grip level and um, uh, and uh, wear of the of the tyre. Correct. So the track from the tarmac itself is very aggressive, um, so the tyre wear is huge. But on the other hand, the, dry, the track is really dirty, so there's many stones on track and really slippery. So this is why it's quite unpredictable, the driving. In some corners you have like some peace and grip, in some others you're like really dr like driving on ice, you know. And uh, this is kind of changing every lap pretty much. And uh, that's why as a driver you need to be really, yeah, on it all the time. Don't do a mistake, just trust your feeling and go really with the track evolution. Um, so yeah, that's, that's for sure a big challenge for us. And um, yeah, later on in the race, I believe tire management together with energy management will be key for success. When do you start managing your tyres? Is it something that really needs to be from the very first lap or do you push for a couple of laps, try and get yourself into a good position and then think about it afterwards? Um, I mean, generally I would say you need to do it right from the, begin from the beginning because once you overheat the tyres, it's really difficult and normally to get them back. And I think it's more of a general philosophy. But obviously, you know, we need to see how good our start is, how good we go the first few corners and then you know as a racing driver you need to decide yourself do you have the chance to gain one or two plus positions or is it maybe just better staying where you are and um and yeah already taking care of your tires for the for the end of the race it's a really strong uh, result for bmw motorsport as a whole is there any way that you and jake together can can work this race for your advantage um, I think it's always good to have uh, both cars in the front. It's the first time we have this um, for a long time. And um, yeah, you know, in, in every kind of racing, especially in Formula E, I think this can be 
uh, can be really good. Um, obviously, we both need to be quick and we both need to have a good pace. This is always the basic uh, for, for a good race. But if this is the case, then I think uh, it's always better to have two cars in the front than, than only one. And let's talk about the challenge of attack mode, very unique to Formula E and even more unique at this Puebla circuit because you're not just running off line, you're on a different part of the track altogether like Rallycross. Correct. I mean, the attack mode time loss is huge, a lot more compared to other circuits. So I would say, of course, you can overtake very well with attack mode, but the amount of lap time you lose is, is quite a lot. So kind of you try to get rid of the attack mode by not losing too many positions. Uh, so track position in a way is key uh, when it comes down to, to attack mode. And yeah, that's why on this circuit, it's very different uh, if you compare it to like uh, Valencia, for instance. It's quite interesting, isn't it, that we call it attack mode and, and in the in most people's heads, it's a benefit to you, but it looks as though this attack mode actually will hurt you more than your benefit. Yes, entirely agree. Um, so let's say for, for us drivers and engineers, uh, it's really important to communicate well in this race and to yeah to hit the sweet spot with, with your decision when it comes down to attack mode usage. Uh, there is not so much you can plan in advance. It's really you know how the race unfolds and uh, when the right moment uh, is. You you kind of have to judge it a lot by your instinct, by your feeling uh, in the moment itself. Um, Formula E have got very excited about the fact that effectively part of this tra race track um, is an oval with some with a banked turn. The last corner it looks like it's not quite flat out, but I have to say the BMW looked very smooth and it wasn't really fighting you through that final corner. How important is that last corner of the lap? Well, I have to say I was fighting quite a lot in FP1, FP2. But we did some okay. uh, good adjustments to the car, so in qualifying it was it was a lot better. And uh, no, I think yeah, for sure for the race, this corner is kind of key. You need you need to on the one hand get a really good run for the straight, but as well the corner where you damage your tires the most of the whole circuit. And um, yeah, there's a lot of things you need to take into consideration. It's not only not only this one corner, but uh, definitely it's very unique and uh, a lot of fun for for us to drive there. And what about that cloud behind you? That looks very ominous. And I guess you guys don't really have an experience of what the circuit's going to be like in the wet. Yeah, you know, I think who knows what, what is happening in Formula E. It's always unpredictable. And uh, now we see these dark clouds approaching. So we may have some rain. Uh, yesterday, the shakedown was wet and it was super, super slippery. You would not imagine how how slippery it was. So um, yeah, this will definitely make the race even more exciting. But I think even without rain, we will have a lot of fun today. Hey, one last question, actually. The circuit sits above 2000 meters in elevation. Is that something that as a driver you, you feel? Um, yes, you feel it. And that, that's what we prepared physically for as well. Um, you just have less oxygen uh, as a driver. So you're kind of breathing a bit more than usual uh, during your lap. And uh, especially for the for the car, you know, with, with the cooling effect for the entire car, especially tires as well, it's less. And this is why, um, yeah, it definitely makes makes a difference. The altitude here. Awesome stuff. Always great to chat with you, Max. I know that you're very, very busy. So thanks for your insight. Fingers crossed for you. Fingers crossed that rain isn't too hard. And uh, can't wait to see how you get on. Cool. Thank you very much, guys. Enjoy the race. Race in a couple of hours out in Puebla. Make sure you tune in. Bye bye for now. <laughs>